In the last video, we looked at getting the re response from this request API and then constructing our own custom object, an instance of a class from it. But we don't want to do the actual work in this API service, right? So the console.log that I'm doing over here is going to change to something else if we want to do with this user object. We don't want this service to do that. I just want the service to create this user instance and somehow hand it back to the consumer of this method. Now here's the problem with handing things back. You cannot really return the user instance from this method. The method cannot have a return type be a user. Why? Because this is an asynchronous method. It's making a call to a get API, which is asynchronous, and the response of this method depends on the response of this asynchronous method. So the, this method itself is asynchronous. If you have an asynchronous method, you cannot really return the result of that asynchronous operation from the method itself. With JavaScript, there are a bunch of different ways in which you can do this. You can have promises, which deal with a way of handing over asynchronous output back to the consumer. You can have things like observables and all that fancy stuff. But the very basic way of dealing with asynchronous methods is by using callbacks. Notice this method, request.get. This is an asynchronous method. And how does it return the value to you? Well, it's offering a callback mechanism. So since get user info is an asynchronous method as well, this method signature also needs to accommodate callbacks. All right, so what we're gonna do is declare a function as an argument. There's gonna be a function which is gonna be the callback. And when you call get user info from anywhere else, I need to pass in the callback. So I need to pass in the function over here, which is what I wanna do with that user. And I want this function to accept that constructed user object, all right? So this would be the way to do this. So let's say this is the signature that we want, right? We wanna accept uh, the user object and the response and uh, do something with it over here. I'm gonna import user again so that we have the signature. So this is what we want, right? This is what we want the user info uh, method signature to be. And here I wanna do console.log of user. So in this way, we are letting the consumer of this method handle the response and not uh, the, the method itself. All right, so in order to do this, I need to create this callback signature. Uh, so this needs to be a CB. This is gonna be a callback function. And now, how do I provide a signature for this function? The signature needs to be a function which accepts a user instance, and then the return is any, right? It's, it could be anything. So in order to do this, I'm gonna create this signature So what this does is it creates this callback function as a parameter in get user info, and I'm also typing it. You see this, this portion is me typing this. And the type indicates that this is a function that takes in one argument, which is of type user, and then the response, the return can be any, all right? So now that I have a callback type, what I'm gonna do here in the response, in the callback of this request API is rather than print to the console, I'm going to execute the callback with the user object that I've created over here, all right? So again, to summarize, there are a couple of changes that I did. The first, I made this a uh, function that can accept a callback. The callback is a function that takes in a user as an argument, an instance of the user class as an argument and does something with it, right? Now I somehow need to update this method in the service to handle this new argument, which is a function. One way to do this is to just accept that argument and this is a function. Well, I'm gonna call the function with the user over here in the callback response. So the user object that I'm you passing over here is received by this guy over here and I can print it to the console. That's great, but now 
I need to somehow type this, right? This has an implicit any type. You see here, we are in TypeScript land. So I now need to provide type information for this callback. So that's what I'm doing over here with this snippet of code. This snippet of code is type information for the function. It's telling what the type of the function is. It's a function that takes in a user instance as an argument, and then it has a return of any type, all right? Now with this, I have moved over the logic of printing to the console into the consumer. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And I still get the same functionality, but I have moved over the logic to the consumer. I'm gonna do the same thing for the repos as well. Remember we have this other method that we haven't implemented. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this over here. In fact, I can extract the options as a constant here uh, outside the class, making something as a constant makes this reusable in both these methods. And uh, I'm going to pass options directly over here. And uh, there's gonna be something very similar for repos as well. Very similar method. So this is gonna be username plus slash repos. And uh, the signature is gonna be very similar. All right. So what I'm gonna get back here, in this case is a little bit different though. It's gonna make the call to the REST API, api.github.com slash user slash username slash repos. But what we're gonna get back in the body is not gonna be something that fits into user. It's gonna be an array of repos, right? So what I'm gonna get back here is an array of repositories that needs that where each of those repository instances needs to be fed into a repo instance. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna get rid of this thing. So this is this is the repos API, right? It's an array. And each element of the array consists of information that needs to be converted into a repo instance. So I'm gonna get back a body var repo array equals body. I'm gonna make a let here. Now for each element of the repo array, I wanna construct a repo instance. So I'm gonna say repo array dot map where each element will be new repo of repo. So I'm basically mapping each element of the response to a repo. Now, I don't have a constructor for repo, so I'm gonna need to create that constructor. So I'm gonna go to repo, and uh, just like we did for For user, I'm gonna to have to map these names to whatever is available in the repo. So this dot name is gonna be repo.name. Description is gonna be description. What else do we have? URL is gonna be same as, URL is HTML URL. Size is gonna be size and uh, fork count is gonna be forks.
there's gonna be forex should actually be size and forex in my api i can map each of these things so whatever response i'm getting back right is going to be an array so i'm going to map and each of these elements from the response is going to get mapped to a, a new repo instance. I'm going to the same line. So I'm mapping each element to this. And now I have a repo array that contains a bunch of instances of this repo class, right? Each one of these responses has been mapped to my custom instance and now I can set this as the response so rather than this be a user in this case I'm returning a repo array and this is going to be an array of repos I'm just going to call this repos and uh, this is going to be return this thing. So here's what I'm doing. I am taking this body, which is a bunch of objects, a list of an array of objects with the response that GitHub provides. And for each element in that array, I am creating a new instance of my custom class, the repo class. And I'm doing that using the constructor model, I'm passing that instance and creating the repo instance. And uh, once I have mapped each element over here, now I have a new array where you don't have individual objects as what the response comes in as. I have individual objects of this repo instance. And since I have this running on body, I'm just gonna do body.map. So it's just a one line function which does all this work. It's pretty cool. Now in my main class, I can pass in a callback, which is gonna get an instance of, uh, an array of repo instances. So in my index.ts, I'm going to make another call here, svc.get repos, and uh, I'm still gonna pass in username, and uh, the callback function is gonna be something that accepts an array of repo instances. And here I'm gonna do console.log of repos. Of course I need to import repo class. Let's save this and uh, let's run this now. We should get the user output printed and the repo output printed. Well, it turns out the repo output isn't getting printed, so let's figure out what's going on. Well, that's because I'm not calling the callback. So let me go ahead and call the callback with this rather than return it. So that was a mistake I was making. Again, you don't want to return from the request. I want to call the callback with this. So I'll say let repos equals this. And then what I need is to pass this constructed object, this array of repo instances to the callback and not return it. Callback of repos. And now I'm gonna run this again. And yes, I do get the output with all the array elements. You see here, each one is an instance of repo, right? All my uh, repositories are getting displayed as an array. All right, this leaves us with the last step to synchronize these two and uh, print out one consolidated output of the user information and the repository information and also to sort out the repositories, right? Rather than print everything, I just wanna print like the top four or the top five repositories based on the number of forks, all right? So let's do that in the next video.